well good morning everybody welcome to day two and here is the North Sea in early morning of September and as you can see it's not the North Sea that you'd expect to see quite calm in fact the captain did say he expected a smooth crossing today so um, fingers crossed it remains that way no need for the uh, sick bags or the uh, sickness pills we'll have to wait and see but yeah had breakfast already went down uh, just after half past seven in and out within 20 minutes and uh, went back to the cabin got some bits out of the cabin and then um, left some time for my cabin steward to make up my room don't get in his way when he's doing his job so yeah it's gonna be a, a leisurely day today chilled laid back probably spend some time around the pool and on the balcony oh and i forgot to say over there somewhere is holland so the only force only fools and horses fans amongst you find a, an oil platform very close to here and ask the directions to Holland. Let's hope the captain does know where he's going anyway. It's the flour when you make your white sauce. It's, the trouble with that is it's very easy to make it lumpy. So therefore the secret is not to have lumps, it's to have more butter than flour. And it's impossible to get lumps. That's not a bad trick, is it? Now, you're looking very glamorous in green. Thank you, I thought I'd match the chopping board. I noticed that. It's a Buy a suit, get a chopping got, board free. I've got my notes here. Who's bought a notebook so they can take notes and learn a few of you? And so there's one you actually have, that's amazing. So you're cooking for us, so Noki uh, with some seafood. So whilst you're cooking, I thought we'd do a bit of a get to know you as well. How does that sound? Well, I'm quite basic, quite, quite straightforward. So Anyone from Leeds? Yay. Yes, I'm a Leeds boy. Leeds 17. Leeds 17. Born and bred? Born and bred. Born and bred up north. Oh. And then when I was 19, I came south to London. So what made you move down south? That was by default, really. Is well, my entire life story is by default, but anyone know Ilkley? Well, in the 1970s, there was a very famous restaurant called The Box Tree in Ilkley, West Yorkshire. And it was only one of four restaurants to have two stars in Michelin. In those days, there were no three stars, and there may have been eight or ten one stars. So Britain, in the eyes of Michelin, was a gastronomic desert in the 70s. And I got this job at the Box Street in Ilkley in West Yorkshire. But it was sort of by luck again, because what happened was I was working in Harrogate at the Hotel St George. And in the afternoon, I used to go through to the Hall Porter's Lodge, and I'd help them poise the shoes to have a cup of tea in my split shift. And one day when I walked in, there was a small book where I used to sit. And it said on the front of it, the eager guide to hotels and restaurants in Great Britain. So I flicked through it, and there was Box Street with three stars, Egan Ronnie. I didn't even know about Michelin. So I walked back to the kitchen that evening for my evening service, and I thought to myself, if I'm going to be a cook, maybe I should work in the best restaurant in Britain. So a week went by, a month went by, two months went by, and that was pizza. And I sort of kept on thinking about box tree, box tree. And then one day I thought to myself, I'll approach them for a job. And so I ran at Box Street. And on the day I rang them for a job, a young man in the kitchen gave his notice. So I got an interview. We had to say goodnight to the boss of this room, Mr. Long. And because I was the youngest in the kitchen, I had to go upstairs first, while the boys dipped round to the Rosen Crown for the last drinks. And but I didn't mind that because they so we would tell these stories about the great French restaurants of London and of France. 
And they used to always talk about a restaurant called La Gavroche. So one day, after about two and a half years of being at Box Street, I wrote to Gavroche. I also wrote to a place called Chewton Glen in the New Forest. Obviously some of you have been there or lived there, yeah. near Christchurch, Darset. Is the um, and so I write to them both. Gavroche sent me back an application in French. So I tried to fill it in, and the truth is, it's a disaster. It's too embarrassing to send it back to them. So I felt that was me blowing my chance. But Tutor Glenn invited me down for an interview. So I get the coach from Yorkshire to Victoria Coach Station, and from Victoria Coach Station, I get the taxi to uh, Waterloo Station, and then from Waterloo down to New Milton. The chef there is a man called Christian Delte, ex Gavroche. He offers me a job in the pastry. And the truth is, I don't like pastry. I don't like sticky fingers. I don't like all that flour and all that sugar. It's something. So I tell him I'll think about it. So I get the train back to London. And remember, this is 1981. And by the time I get to Victoria Coach Station, I've missed my last coach home. So my only option is to wait to walk the streets and to get the first coach back in the morning. So I'm at the back of Victoria Coach Station. I walk up to the top of the road to the crossroads. I turn right without realising I, I turn right into Pimlico Road. I walk along Pimlico Road and I come to another set of traffic lights. I turn right again because my logic is if I keep on turning right I'll go around the big giant circle. I won't get lost. So I walk up Lower Slow Street and then I find myself looking through the windows at this quite smart restaurant. And I look at the name above the door. The name above the door is La Gavroche. So I thought to myself, in the morning, I'll knock on the door and tell them my story. So I walk the night, streets of London. In the morning, I knock on the back kitchen door of Gavroche. Nothing answers. Nobody answers, sorry. I knock again, and then I get an answer. A boy called Balou tells me Gavroche is not open for lunch. But he is the pastry chef who prepares the bread and does the mise en place, the preparation in advance for the evening service. But he tells me how to get to the Rue head office. Down Lower Stone Street, over the traffic lights, Chelsea Bridge Road, over Chelsea Bridge, Queenstown Road, get to the top of Queenstown Road, turn left onto Wandsworth Road, walk down Wandsworth Road, about 300 metres on the, the right hand side. Sounds very easy, doesn't it? But I was rather tired because I'd been up since about 3 o'clock that morning the previous day. I'd travelled down to London, gone to the New Forest, missed my coach, but I'm lost. But all of a sudden I ended up by the river. And I see to my right there's a bridge and I thought to myself, I wonder if that's Chelsea Bridge. So I walk to the bridge and that's Chelsea Bridge. So I cross the bridge and then I make my next mistake. I do left rather than walk to the top of Queenstown Road. But the truth is that was my good fortune because by going left, that took me exactly to the room head office. When I got to the top of the road, I saw over the road, there was an office with ROUX above the door. I thought, wow, that's the room head office. So I knock on the door and I walk inside. And on the desk on my left is the great man himself, Albert Roux. And he said to me in his French accent, what can I do for you? So I told him my mad story. I told him about the box tree. I told him I got the coach. I told him I went to New Milton. They offered me a job in the pastry. I came back to London, I missed my coach. I had to walk the streets. Then I met Baloo, the boy who does the preparation. He told me how to get here. And I told him I got lost, but eventually I found my way. I don't think Albert was interested in that, but... <laughs> He was quite intrigued, he was very polite, he didn't interrupt me. 
He said, where do you work? I said, I work at the box tree. He said, I had the best meal of my life at the box tree. The best meal, the best meal I've ever had in Britain at the box tree, which was nothing to do with me. And on the strength of that, he gave me a job. Good evening everybody. Tonight is uh, Saturday night and it's the first of the um, formal celebration evenings. Uh, I think tonight is actually called Celebration Night so um, yeah, you get, get myself ready for that. The plan is to go for a wander about, uh, have something to eat, do a little bit of footage of everyone dressed up in their finery um, yeah, and then just have a chilled evening. Just finished watching the uh, Sky Sports News and Spurs won in the dying seconds, which was even better news for the holiday. Left it late. Um, but yeah, that is the plan for this evening. Um, I'm surprised this suit still fits, to be honest, but it does. It's not too bad, actually. Um, don't know if I have two buttons or one button, what do you reckon? Mm, not quite sure. The reason I've gone for the pink tonight is because it's celebration night and it's not formal, formal night. So um, I know they're technically the same, but celebration night's a bit more colour and glamour, I think. So um, yeah, that is the plan. The, um, the water is chopped up a little bit. Um, there's a few white horses out there, which you'll see a bit later on. Um, it's not quite as smooth as it was earlier, but as to be expected, we're in a North Sea. But you can't feel it. The boat's completely still. You, you wouldn't even know that you were moving, to be honest. Um, not much of a swell, but like I say, the wind has picked up a bit and there are some white horses on top of the waves out there. So yeah, that's the update really. Um, so yeah, I'll take you around the ship in a bit. Yeah. 